Hello there. Welcome to the next video in our saddle fitting series. My name is Ari with Haven Horsemanship and thank you for joining me. So this is the first video in our case studies. Uh, so again, I'll be doing two videos with five horses each showing how I'm fitting my one edict saddle to the 10 different horses. In this first video, we'll probably have more variation. I'm going to try to show all the different variants that you saw in the introduction video. So we're going to be looking at the uphill horse, the horse with the dip in its back, the downhill horse, the flat backed horse, and a horse with significant differences between right and left. If you haven't already watched the introduction to saddle fit video, then I highly suggest you watch that first. The link is right below in the description. Go ahead and watch that first. It'll give you all the background information you need to understand what's really going on in this video. So again, we'll be looking at five horses in this video and then five horses in the next video. I hope you enjoy it. First horse. So this is Moose. He's an 18-hand branded Mustang, but clearly mostly draft horse. He's built very uphill and has very prominent withers, which you'll see a picture of. Um, so we're going to show now fitting it to him and see how he likes it. Here you can see the line showing that Moose's withers are higher than the top of his haunches. First, we are going to try the average-sized pommel. And see how big that is. It just kind of slides right down his back when you try to put it in place. So that one is too big. See how it sticks up here and the corner would be digging into his side. So we'll try the next size down. Okay, so I'm going to try the next size smaller. And that is this pretty blue one here. And see that one sits a little better. There might be still a little bit of a gap down here and digging in a little bit up front here. But definitely better than the last one. We'll go ahead and try the smallest one on him. Now we're going to try the smallest one, which is this orange one right here. We're going to put it on. And see that one seems like it fits the best. And there's a little bit of a gap under here. Overall, it feels pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and try this one. Now here's the saddle just sitting on him. Because he's so uphill and has such a high wither, the rider tends to be like they're falling back. So we're going to shim under probably the middle and the back of the saddle. Um, you'll see how much higher the front part of the saddle is than the back. A saddle that's tipped back like this can also cause the rider to feel like they have to lean forward or close their hip angle more in order to be over their horse's center of gravity. The lighter orange line shows the saddle balance from before we put the shims in. So you'll see there's a slight improvement with one set of shims. In this picture, again, the lightest line shows the saddle balance without any shims. The line in the middle, the orangish brown line, shows the saddle balance with one shim. I did go ahead and try two shims in the back pocket and the middle pockets, and that is the top line. That I think is a good balance for him. Next, we're going to look at Artie, a horse with a dip in their back. Artie is also a little more complicated because he has differences between his left and right sides, which we'll talk about a little bit in this video. Artie is one of the main cases that made me realize that I really need to do um, continuous fit videos for everyone to see how the experimenting goes. You do the initial fit, you ride, something isn't quite right, you change something a little bit, you try again. Um, Artie, I still haven't got quite right as far as his imba imbalance between left and right, but I know we'll get there. So this is Artie, and he'll just keep trying to um, lip target the phone probably. Um, but he is a 20, you're, you're 20, right? Yeah, you're 20. <laughs> he'll be 21 this year. And you'll see in just a couple minutes that we have been developing his back because when he came here a couple years ago, he had a really, really drop back. Um, so we're hoping to be able to help that with uh, the shims today uh, so that he's a lot more comfortable when we're riding. Hold on. Here is Artie's back and you can see the dip that is still there. Um, aside from the dip, he's pretty even as far as the top of his withers and the top of his haunches, maybe just slightly uphill. 
Okay, so we're gonna try just the average size like we were doing with all of them first. And you'll see this one slides a little bit, but if anything, this inside corner is up just a little bit. So we're actually gonna try um, the next one bigger. Okay, so trying the next size up, which is this one right here. And see that one sits a lot better. It doesn't keep sliding down. And it's a little bit up off his shoulder up here. But overall, I think that fits better than the smaller one. So we're gonna try this one today. Here is Artie with the saddle on without the pad. And as you can see, indeed, it is dropped back a bit, actually a little bit more so than I thought it would be considering that, although he's slightly uphill, um, he does have that drop in his back. So I thought he'd be a little bit more balanced front to back and be an illusion, as I stated in the saddle fit intro video. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and look. So coming up here, look at Pommel. Pommel looks like it's following his shoulder pretty well. And we'll go ahead and reach down. Feels pretty even. Just at the very back of his shoulder blade is where I start to feel the drop and start to feel that there isn't as good of contact. And back here, if anything, because it's tilted back, indeed, I do feel almost like there's more pressure back here. It's very heavy. Um, and I can pretty easily slide my hand up underneath where I'd sit. Um, so indeed, it does look like middle shim and back shim on this side, but as always, we should check both sides. So Artie's horse, that does tend to lean pretty hard left. He's just kind of a slouchy guy. So um, the saddle can actually start to slide. So now we're gonna look at this side and same thing, following his shoulder pretty well. I'm gonna feel down on this side. Feels like it's making a little bit better contact on this right side. And then on this side, I can't fit my hand up under there quite as well. Um, the saddle doesn't feel quite as heavy back here as it does on the other side, uh, which indicates to me that indeed, he might be a candidate to shim actually all the way down on that left side. That's the side that he drops um, and it can make you feel like you're about to slide right off his left side. So now here's the saddle on already all girthed up and with all the shims in place. So there's front, middle, and back shims on this side. I can no longer easily stick my hand up there. And right here doesn't feel quite as heavy as it did. It used to feel like all the weight of the saddle was right back there because it was, the saddle was tipped so far back. So that's the left side. Here's the saddle on Artie's right side. So as you can see again, looks nice and balanced now. Um, so remember, full left side is shimmed, right side, no shim up front, okay? Because remember, the saddle was wanting to um, rock back, so we want to, if anything, bring um, the front a little bit lower. And there's shim in the middle, so I can no longer easily stick my hand up there and shim at the back. And the saddle feels much lighter now. Um, even with the girth on, it doesn't feel like all the weight is sitting back on the saddle, which is what we want. So this is what I will try first with Artie, and hopefully it feels better. This is Rhea that we're going to be fitting. She's a great horse as a rescue off of a meat truck. Um, she's a sweet, sweet girl, beautiful mover. Uh, as you'll see, a little bit downhill, um, which has caused some saddle slipping issues. Um, and probably has been causing biomechanical issues. I just haven't um, looked closely enough back at um, film and stills to see them. So hoping to be able to just help her be a little bit more comfortable and the rider too, so that they don't feel like they're sliding forward quite as much. So here's Rhea's back. And as you can see, she is indeed a bit downhill. Um, so she's another one that oh, I'm gonna try shimming um, front and middle and hopefully that'll help the saddle balance. As usual, starting with the average pommel. And you'll see there's a bit of a gap here, a little bit of a gap there, but it actually looks like it might fit pretty well. We're gonna try the 
large, the green one, um, just to see if it's made chance a little bit better, um, especially since we'll be shimming up front. Um, a little bit wider might not be a bad thing. So now, Rhea again, looking at the large pommel, the green one. Yeah, for whatever reason, just most of the horses here seem to fit best in this large one. See, there's a little bit of a gap down here, um, but otherwise it seems to follow her shoulder pretty well. Um, and like I said, because we're going to be um, putting those shims in, uh, I think a little bit wider is going to be better. Okay, so here's Rhea with the saddle on with a large pommel. And it's a little deceptive. <laughs> um, that she doesn't look more out of balance than she is. Um, I'm going to go ahead still and shim the front of the pad. Um, and I'll try to move the saddle a little bit. Looks like the saddle might be a little far back. But one thing I do want to show you, you can kind of see just looking at her back, is I can stick my hand up here quite easily. There's a, there's a gap. Back here behind the saddle, can't. Right here, I can. I move the saddle up and it still doesn't look as unbalanced as I thought it would. Um, you know, this seems to be following her shoulder pretty well. I can't, um, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm sticking my hand down um, the channel here and feeling along her shoulder here. It actually feels like it's sitting pretty well. So again, here's a spot where there is a gap. Reaching up from here, there does feel like there's a little bit of a gap um, where the front shim would go. So we're going to still go ahead and shim um, and see what it looks like after shimming. So here Rhea is all cinched up. Well, girthed up. I'm used to western saddles. Um, here she is all girthed up. And it looks pretty good to me. So if anything, you know, the saddle's the tiniest bit uphill, maybe. <laughs> But again, I know how it feels when I'm on her, you know, and that she is quite downhill and the saddle slides forward. Um, so if anything, I would rather it feel, hi pretty girl, a little bit uphill or look a little bit uphill um, than downhill. And you'll see she has a bit of a forward girth area and that's part of the problem as well. Um, that the saddle will slend, tend to slip back and tip forward. Um, causing the girth to be at a diagonal rather than as close to perpendicular to the ground as possible. So again, because you have their shims in there, I can no longer easily stick my hand up um, because you have that middle shim underneath where I was able to put my hand quite easily before. Um, and it's eliminated any popping up back here um, that tends to happen because the saddle slides forward, um, especially as she's moving. So this is probably the first setup I would try um, is the large pommel, the green one, and then um, front and middle shims, and then I would go from there. This is Sierra. She's the littlest horse I'll be fitting to. She's about 13.3. Um, and she doesn't have any huge saddle fit issues, though she does have a pretty wide wither, which you'll see. Um, so I think being able to change out the palm will really help her. So here's her back, and just like always, we're going to start with the white pommel, the average size first. So you'll see, it sticks up a little bit down here at the bottom. And it digs into her shoulder just a little bit. So we'll try the next widest just to see. Okay, here's Sierra again, this time looking at the large pommel, the green one. And you see this one, it's maybe just a little bit better. We'll even try the extra large. I think that one will be a little bit too large, but we'll see, we'll try it. Okay, here we are with extra large. This one has a horn on it. Oh yeah, see this one looks like it's a little bit big. You know, it doesn't want to sit flat on her shoulder. It wants to wiggle around. So we're gonna go back and look at maybe the large and the average again. One more time to see which one we want to start with. Okay, back to the large, the green. That one looks pretty good. We're gonna look at 
the average one more time before I make my decision. <laughs> but so far I'm thinking this one, this large. Okay, see here, the average size one more time, the white. Yeah, see this one just seems a little bit narrow. It, it's kind of sitting right on her shoulder, causing a rocking there that the, uh, the uh, large, the green one didn't have. Here's Sierra with the saddle on her. And as you can see, the front is maybe just a smidge lower. Um, and again, so many of the horses here have such well-developed backs from living out in a herd 24 seven running around that even if they aren't built downhill, they'll start to feel downhill in most saddles because saddles were designed for horses with backs that are not out all the time moving around. Um, you know, ones that are, their primary movement is through training, so their backs just develop differently. The horses here end up quite flat-backed and a bit mutton-withered because they have such well-developed backs and shoulders. Um, so again, this is the large pommel on her, and I am going to try um, shimming uh, the front and middle probably on her as well, and then we'll look and see what that looks like. So here's Sierra all saddled and girthed up. This looks pretty good to me. Um, you'll see it similar to Rhea, if anything, maybe the saddle's a tiny bit uphill, um, but I'm okay with that uh, because um, you know, I know when I'm riding her that she can feel quite downhill. Um, in her case, in most of these horses' cases, I've been shimming both the front and the middle when I'm concerned about them feeling a bit downhill. Um, the reason for that is often, you know, right back in here, if you're only shimming the front, um, if they have a very flat back like these horses do, you can end up with a gap right underneath where you're sitting, and that isn't particularly what we want. Um, we want a consistent feel all the way down. Hi, pretty girl. Hi, pretty girl. Um, so that's why I've been doing that. Um, but if your horse's back isn't quite as flat as these, these horses are, um, you can always try shimming just the front first to lift up off the shoulder and then put it on, put your girth on, and again, just see if you can stick your hand under there. And if you can stick it under there pretty easily, um, especially, you know, all the way up to where that middle shim would be, definitely consider uh, putting that middle shim in as well. Hi there, so this is Champ, and we'll be fitting him next. Um, he is an Arabian that's actually literally physically crooked. I'll do my best to show you that. Um, because we think he fractured his pelvis when he was young. So hopefully with some shims we can make him and the rider more comfortable. Okay, so here's Champ. You see he's pretty even. Maybe a little dropped in his back, but not too bad. Um, the bigger issues for Champ are, you'll see here, I'm going to touch here. This is his hip bone. Okay, so you'll see it, it seems a little high if you're familiar with a lot of horses. That is where his hip bone is on this side. So here's Champ's right side. This is not bone, not bone, not bone right here is where is the closest I can estimate the point of his hip is. This is the only bony spot. Oh, so that is why he is so crooked. Okay, like always, starting with the average one. Um, and that, see, looks I think it might be good. It's actually a little bit up off of his side at its highest point. So we'll actually try the slightly wider one. Okay, so now, slightly wider one going on. And you'll see that actually fits him really well. It's nice and flush against his shoulder. Pretty flush at the back too. A little bit of a gap down here, but not too bad. I haven't been showing it with all the horses, but it is important to check both sides. Um, Champ is standing a little bit off, but you'll see, even though he's standing off, it's pretty flush on this side. Um, you might notice when you check both sides that even when they're standing square, there's a bit of a difference. And that could be from training, they are going one direction more than the other, or simply from your horse's more innate crookedness. But there are things you can do to help both of those. Here's Champ with the saddle on, and you can see he's actually got a pretty nice balanced back on this side. Um, we're going to see if we can see any differences in how it fits that allude to the issues of 
feeling like you're going to fall off his right side, especially when you're turning left. Um, so here you'll see it's sitting quite nice and flat against his back, and we'll see if it looks the same on the other side. Okay, here is Champ's right side, and indeed you can see, it's a little bit hard because of how he's standing, but you can see that there is a bit of a gap under here. Um, so, and I can actually feel it sticking my hand up underneath under here. I can feel a gap. Um, so we're going to shim on the back, just on the right side. Um, back probably actually in middle, and we'll see how that feels for today. So here's Champ. All saddled up, you see nice and balanced up top, pommel and cantle are even. And I'll show you here. You know, not you can't put your hand under there without forcing it in. Okay, and we're gonna look at this side too. Remember, um, without the shims, just the saddle, I was able to easily put my hand all the way up underneath the saddle, right about here. I can't do that anymore. So see how it feels when I'm on. I mean, there's the possibility I might need more shims. There's also the possibility I might want shims all the way up front too. Um, that I think I'm just gonna have to feel out and see what feels good to both of us. Okay, so that is it for the case studies for this video. But now I do have a couple caveats before you go and look at your saddle on your horse. I did cut out some video because this video was already so long. So if a horse did not have significant enough gaps to shim, I didn't show reaching down the channel or back behind the panel, and sometimes I didn't show both sides. Always do both sides. Always check. Um, I just cut that out for ones where I didn't find anything because this video is already so long. Next caveat. It can be so tempting to shove a shim in every little gap you find. Resist that temptation, especially if you're using an edict saddle. Edict saddles are made to break in and conform more and more to the rider and to the horse's back. So, small gaps will be taken care of by the saddle itself. If there are large gaps, like I'm showing in these videos, where you can see I am easily able to stick my hand up under the saddle, that is what you shim. You also shim based on how you feel when you're riding. So if you feel like your horse is uh, down in front of you, like you could just you know slide right down their neck, they're pro they may be downhill. Um, so shim the front of the saddle and try it. See if it's more comfortable for you. If it's not, then take the shims out again. Again, a lot of this is an experimental process. Um, you know, for example, like Moose, the, the uphill horse I showed, I showed putting two shims under the saddle. I'm still playing with it. I don't know yet if I'm gonna be more comfortable and he's gonna be more comfortable with one shim or two, but I did wanna show that you really don't need a whole lot of shims to correct pretty significant uh, conformational types. If you are ever tempted to put in more than two shims, if you're looking at putting in three or four shims, please, please, please contact Edix, contact me, or contact the dealer that you got your saddle from. Because the horses here are very variable. They have some significant conformational differences. Um, whether that be you know significant uphill, significant downhill, significantly different between right and left, and I have not been tempted to put in more than two shims. So, I would say, rule of thumb, stick to two shims or less. If you're tempted to put in more, get a second opinion. Thank you for joining me for this first case study video. I really hope you found it helpful. Make sure to tune in for the second case study video coming up soon. Uh, and I have decided, after doing all of these initial fittings and starting to ride the horses in the corbel saddle, there would be a disservice to everyone to not show the continuous fitting that goes on. As much as I wish I could tell you that after this initial fitting everything will be perfect and lovely and it'll feel amazing, that would be a lie. Um, sometimes you will get it right on the first try. Other times you won't. You'll get it on and something might feel very wrong or something just might kind of feel off. And I don't want you to settle for it kind of feeling off. Odds are we can fix it. So. Uh, stay tuned again for the second case study video and then we are going to be lengthening the series out to um, at least one continuous fitting video, uh, possibly more, it depends on how much material I gather for you as I'm doing these first few weeks of riding in the Corval saddle after doing these initial fittings. So stay tuned, lots more to come, and I will see you soon.